Are you often bloated and gassy? Are you often constipated or do you suffer from diarrhea? Are you always tired and your mind feels cloudy? What about headaches, joint pain, skin rashes, sinus congestion? These are just some of the symptoms you may experience if you suffer from food intolerances. Food intolerances can be difficult to identify as the reaction can occur hours or even days after ingestion. You may be surprised to know that food intolerances or sensitivities are on the rise in the Western world. And in fact, one in five people have what we call an IgG food intolerance. That's a lot of people who are bloated and gassy. So why are more people developing food intolerances? Here are a few of the reasons. The modern diet consists of a lot of processed byproducts and synthesized compounds which are foreign to our bodies and devoid of nutritional benefit. Also, the amount of toxins our bodies are exposed to on a daily basis are too much for our elimination systems to handle. They can disrupt our delicate gut ecosystem, damage the intestinal lining and cause inflammation. Overuse of antibiotics and other medications also destroy the gut barrier ecosystem and wreak havoc on our immune system. Stress is also a major factor as it increases inflammation and negatively impacts our microbiome. And finally, the increased number of cesarean births negatively affect our gut microbiome, which can lead to leaky gut and food intolerances. Okay, so let's take a few steps back. You're often bloated, constipated and tired, and maybe you suffer from a number of other symptoms too, but you can't for the life of you work out which foods are causing you these issues. Well, there's two ways to find out. The first is by doing an elimination diet, and the second is to do a food sensitivity test. The biggest advantage with elimination diets is that it doesn't cost you anything. You can just start right away and you don't have to order anything online. Tick. Elimination diets are also highly accurate because you are determining the results based on how you feel. On the other hand, food sensitivity tests are easier in that you don't have the long trial and error phase of an elimination diet. You can identify your intolerances a lot more quickly. There's also no need to eliminate healthy foods unless you are certain they are contributing to your symptoms. However, food sensitivity tests can sometimes be inaccurate depending on the labs you go through, what you ate that week, and there's a lot of factors. So if you are doing an elimination diet, begin by removing a number of foods. As you remove the foods, your symptoms should start decreasing. The common ones that cause reactions for a lot of people should thus be avoided initially. Are one, gluten, dairy, eggs, soy, corn, nuts, food chemicals, and preservatives. For some people, nightshade vegetables are also problematic, such as tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants. A helpful tip is to keep a food diary where you can track all the symptoms you feel and the foods that you eat to help you draw links and determine your problem foods. For some people, other foods like bananas, pineapples, and cane sugar can also cause issues. So it can be quite a process of elimination and take some time. If you opt for the food intolerance test, once you get the results back, eliminate them from your diet completely. You should start feeling better within a couple of days and be symptom free within one to two weeks. Once you've eliminated your problem foods and start feeling symptom improvement, your treatment should focus on three areas. One, you want to support and modulate your immune system. There are a number of herbs and nutrients and specific strains of probiotics which help to do just this. Right now, your immune system is overactive and you want to modulate it. Two, the mucosal lining of your gut wall needs to be repaired. Again, there are some nutrients such as glutamine, vitamin D and zinc, which are important in this healing process. Digestive bitters or enzymes also help to ensure your food is fully digested as poorly digested food particles and proteins damage the intestinal wall. Thirdly, you want to reestablish healthy intestinal flora in the gut through the use of probiotic and prebiotic foods and supplements. After a period of four to six weeks, gradually reintroduce the foods one at a time. It's important to allow a couple of days after each individual food so that you are able to monitor for any reactions. If the food does not cause any digestive upset or other symptoms, you'll know that you are able to reintroduce that food. But if you do have a negative reaction, you'll need to retest a few days later at a smaller dose and see how much your body can tolerate. Now, I know a lot of people would rather not know what they react to. This way they can continue eating that food in blissful ignorance. 
this is not a good idea. Why? Because this can just lead to further gut damage and the development of more food intolerances. Also, you need to know the goal is not to restrict in the long term, this is important, but to heal the gut so that you can reintroduce and tolerate much more diversity and as much food as possible. In other words, foods are not to be eliminated forever, but just for a period of time in order to heal your gut. Well, that's it for today's video. So now I want to hear from you. What's your experiences with food sensitivities? Is it something you've looked into? Is it something you've gotten on top of? Have you tried an elimination diet? I know I've heard crazy stories of people finally discovering that their issue was cinnamon. I kid you not, they were having all these problems and then they finally discovered that it was cinnamon that was causing the issue. So let me know in the comments, what's your experience? We always love to hear from our viewers. And while you're here, give us a like and subscribe and even give that notification bell a ring. It really helps us get these videos out to the people that need to hear it the most. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you in the next video.